I'm Elizabeth Smith from Oliver Smith Jeweler. I am here with Mr. George Reed, and today we're talking about the Rolex Daytona and why buying one even over retail is a good buy. But first, let's talk about what's on our wrist. All right, uh, today uh, I have, and if you if you remember, if you're familiar with the channel, uh, this is uh, an oldie but a goodie. But this is uh, Rolex Reference One Six Eight Zero. This one happens to be from 1974, I believe, and you are talking about a red sub. Um, this particular model uh, came to me out of uh, Central California, um, uh, original owner family, and it's just a great condition mm -hmm. piece. A um, uh, guy bought it new in 74 for like $288, so Amazing. it kind of dovetails into what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. um, the appreciation on this watch has been astronomical. Um, the rarity of a red line sub, um, the, the overall really original condition on this is really nice as well. Um, I believe the bezel insert's been changed, but um, it's, it's, it's tens on tens on tens more valuable than it was originally. So, um, and, and it just it just wears great. So, they only knew now. Yeah, right. And I have on today. This is my Patek Philippe, my mid-size Nautilus. Uh, this is really crown jewel of my collection. I would be. say uh, the seven one one eight. It has the new wave dial, automatic movement. It's just beautiful piece. The full size rotor on this one as well, which is kind of mm -hmm. neat considering how thin they kept it. Um, usually on the thinner watches, you'll see the uh, the micro rotor, but um, just a stunning piece. And and you've got a you've got a steel Nautilus on your wrist, yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say it wears really light when I look at it. I smile. My wrist. <laughs> I, it's an awesome one. Uh huh. Uh, all right, so let's jump into it. So today we're talking about the Rolex Daytona. Now this is the modern Daytona, um, the ceramic bezels you're all familiar with. Um, uh, kind of a fun fact, uh, the, really the only real changes to the watch were cosmetic. Um, it mm -hmm. has the same case, so if, you're, so if you're a Daytona guy, this one's going to feel just like the old ones. But this one here in the black dial, pre-owned, we are selling for twenty six thousand five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and um, I hope this video doesn't date ourselves because it might be more by the time you see this. Right. Um, and starting retail. Uh, right around twelve thousand seven hundred. Yep. Um, so why are the prices on Daytona's? I mean, you look at Daytona's online, and the prices are all over the place. Yeah. They don't seem to make a lot of sense unless you're really doing your homework. Yeah. Yeah. Why was? Um, why would that be? So so. With Rolex and with a few companies, um, there are certain watches that are what um, we call holdout pieces. Um, so the Daytona has, the steel Daytona, I, I want to be specific about that. The steel Daytona has been that way for years. Um, the only way to get a Daytona is to be offered a Daytona. Now, the only way to be offered a Daytona is to be beyond a VIP client um, with an authorized dealer. Mm -hmm. So right. typically what that means is um, you've bought a lot from that dealer. And that just gets you the privilege of being on the list to actually wait for, for your watch. Yep. So when somebody asks me, how can you charge almost double retail or double retail, or in the case of your watch, the, the, the men's version of that watch, uh, uh, the 5711 mm -hmm. in blue, is it, at one point was a triple retail piece. Right. And, and my answer is simple. Um, it's because it's worth it. Uh, getting this watch at $26,500, mm -hmm. I'm saving you close to $100,000 and years and years and years of your life. If, if this is a watch you want, there are two ways to get it. You can start with buying a Tudor, you mm -hmm. can get your first date just, you can get a sub, right. which gets you on the list to get a GMT master, get one or two of those, maybe buy a gold piece, a diamond ring for your wife, and yeah. then, you're on, you, then you're actually really on the list. Yeah, you've and, got quite the collection behind it. And even then, the list is funny, because you, you think you're on the list as an AD, and you're not necessarily on the AD's list, you're on your, the guy you've been working with, you're on his list. Mm -hmm. Now, most ADs have five or six guys, and all of those guys have three or four guys who qualify who are on their lists. So each one of those gets one turn. Mm -hmm. Each one of those gets one turn. So, so you could wait another five years right. once you're already this there. This is exhausting. It's exhausting. Hearing about it's it. exhausting. <laughs> yeah, uh, there, was, there was one of the guys uh, who's actually on Shark Tank waited like six years for his paddock to come in. Yep. And he actually, like, like it, it went kind of, it went kind of wild that every, everybody all over the internet kind of saw it because he was, he was just so thrilled to finally get it. But, um, or you can come see a guy like me, pay double retail and you get to walk out with your watch. And what's really cool there, and, and yes, it's a premium, yes, it's stomach churning, but when you do that, you, you spend the 26.5, you mm -hmm. walk out the door, you know how much your watch is worth? 
26,500. $26, There's no depreciation at all from that price. As a matter of fact, more likely than not, it's going to be worth more down the line. Um, in all the years I've been doing it, this has not changed. This has not gotten cheaper. Um, everything else, you know, you kind of wave a little right. bit. Um, uh, the Atona is the most solid place to park 30K. Um, it's the best part of your portfolio. And even in a crazy year like 2020 that we're seeing, yep. prices can stay consistent and Absolutely, continue to rise. Yeah. Yeah. And, and across platforms. I mean, th this is not just a US market thing. This is a world market thing. Mm -hmm. So people ask, well, then why doesn't Rolex make more? And one, they don't need to. Um, they absolutely control half of the worldwide watch market, mm -hmm. um, but they have more out there. This is completely controlled. Um, th this is to to build this fervor. If they did make more, then you wouldn't want it. Um, it's a simple right. si simple econ 101. Supply and demand. Absolutely. Remember absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yep. 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 Awesome. Well, I think it gives us some good background as to why the pricing is, although it seems so crazy, um, it really is set in a kind of methodical supply and demand it, way. It doesn't make sense, but when you break it down, it is quite logical. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's something that actually does make a little bit more sense, hopefully now. Yeah, part of the fun. I feel like it's a kind of just a crazy part of the watch world. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. But um, yeah, if you have questions, please comment down below. Um, I'm happy to answer them for you as best I can. Yep. And hopefully this gives you a better understanding of the Rolex Daytona yep. and the pricing you see on the secondary market. Make sure to tune to some of our other Rolex videos and make sure to subscribe so you can follow along. Thanks for tuning in, guys.